Here I will show off the Star Wars ships mod for Space Engineers by DD Death 666 So first up we have the X-Wing Starfighter here, which from a Space Engineers standpoint is not the greatest. Um, my biggest myth with it is the fact that it only has the two small thrusters both top, down, left, and right. You can kind of see them right there between the wings there, which gives it very, very poor maneuverability. Now this thing can move pretty well considering its weight and uh, the thrusters that it has in the back, but the maneuverability is a bit of a problem and the biggest issue to me is the fact that with the three um, landing gear there, when you only have the two on the bottom, here I'll try to show you here, when you attempt to take off, you can't even really outdo the magnetic pull of the, um, of the landing gear even when they're disengaged. And that, that's obviously a bit of a problem. Um, also of note is the fact that it's only got the four Gatling guns. It does not have any rocket launchers to imitate the proton torpedoes. Um, I feel like a couple of them could have been put here on the nose. Um, although maybe the conveyor system doesn't extend that far into the nose. I'm not entirely certain. But only having the four Gatling guns is a little bit of a downer. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just copy paste this sucker. Whoops. Since I can't actually lift off with it. So I can fly around for a bit. So, we have two different keys, that, which are all we really have to worry about. Of course we have the Gatling guns, which you can fire using the mouse and then you have the rotors that will allow you to open and close. Now as you can see, I'm not quite sure what I hit there, um, as you can see, like I can, I can move pretty well forward and back, but when I actually attempt to rotate here, it's a little bit sluggish, and when I attempt, so right now I'm holding down the space bar to go up and down, and it's taking a long time. Here, I'm going to use those back thrusters to get back to zero. I'm now going to try and push upwards and upwards and upwards. And those two tiny little thrusters really just aren't doing it. Um, I think that the number of thrusters ought to be at least doubled um, to get the maneuverability to, especially to match the TIE Fighter, as we'll see. But you certainly can't deny that having someone fly at you with the wings starting to open. That's a pretty great moment right there. Got the wing, which out of the ships that is represented here in the mod, I think is probably my favorite out of the rebel ships um, compared to the other two. If there was a B wing, I'd probably prefer that one, but since there isn't, we're just going to have to sadly resort to the Y-Wing, which generally in various games is one of the more pathetic ships you have available to you. But they've done a good job. We have the two Gatling guns up front to represent the two laser cannons, and the one up top to represent the ion cannon. And then of course you have eight rocket launchers, four on each side. And that really makes it a blast, no pun intended, to fly around with. As you can see here, it's got m a lot more thrusters on the top and on the bottom than what you have available on the X-Wing which, while it's not really going to give you any kind of ability to pull off any tricks or anything like that, it at least lets you lift off, which is more than you can say for the X-Wing. So, I'm going to go ahead and jump in real quick. So, first we will disengage that, turn on the reactor, and as you can see, it takes off without a hitch. Take that, Incom. So, when I start flying around, obviously it's not nearly as speedy as the X-Wing was, so at least that's, you know, true to the character of the two ships. But here I am holding down the space bar to move upwards, and I feel like I'm actually going up faster than the X-Wing was, which, that's embarrassing. We have the three Gatling guns that all fire in sync. I suppose if you really wanted to be a role player, you could divide those out so you had the laser and the ion cannon, but since it's just going to tear it up anyway, it's not going to make that big a difference. And then, of course, we have our rockets. Boom. 
They're a little bit hard to aim. But... Does quite a bit of damage. That's probably a little bit expensive for survival, but as you can see, I completely blew holes straight through those A-wings and X-wings. And that's really all you ever need the Y-wing for. It's a bomber in cannon, and it's a bomber in space. Is the A-wing interceptor. There's not a whole lot to say about it. It's got two Gatling guns and two rocket launchers, which is more than you can say for the X-Wing, which again, it seems like a little bit of an oversight on the X-Wing's part, but it's a nice speeded little ship. So we'll go ahead and just start flying around with it to show it off. So disengage that, turn the thrusters back on. Once again, able to take off, whereas the X-Wing is not able to. In here, we can really start zipping around. I really like the shape of the armor that it's got in there, making it match up pretty well with what it looks like in canon. Only single rockets instead of bunched up before, so it's not going to do nearly as much damage, and especially since they're not, you know, homing like they are in, in Star Wars canon. You know, you really better be lucky and hope that you get a shot off on something. But it's pretty quick, and as you can see, you know, it's really easy for me here using the mouse to zoom around and rotate. So it might be a flashy little thing, although like the X-Wing, I think within actual space engineers' use, it's not going to be anything more than eye candy. But, I mean, it, it still does look pretty cool. We move on to the Empire ships starting with the TIE Fighter. Now, this looks great from a distance, but when as soon as you get close, this thing looks butt ugly. I mean, the cockpit here is probably one of the biggest problems. I mean, if you look over at the cockpits for the other ships, I mean, they, they just happen to fit the aesthetic very nicely, but it obviously does not fit the aesthetic of the TIE Fighter at all. The usage of the, um, you know, the sloped off armor like this is also really, really ugly. Um, but in spite of the TIE Fighter being ugly, as you can see with the number of thrusters it has and with the, the small size it's got and with the number of gyroscopes I think it's got on the inside, this thing can turn on a dime, which I'll show you in a second. But just to kind of, you know, show a little bit what how this could be improved, I know that the original author wanted this specifically to be done without mods, but if you are going to make a mod version, you at least have to include the classic orb cockpit. I mean, as you can see, I mean, this thing was built for exactly this sort of purpose. And so you stick that thing in there, and then that pretty much removes any of my issues that I have with the aesthetics. One thing that I really enjoy about the TIE Fighters here is how he's just kind of cleverly hidden the, um, the landing gear here on the inside of the wing you can only really see, you, your eyes are drawn to it because it's currently active and green, but that's, like, I didn't notice it at first when I was first looking at them, when they're colored black and just really kind of, you know, just very subtly attached there. But, so let's go ahead and give this thing a spin. Turn it all on. Some people really don't like the number of thrusters you've got there. It doesn't bother me particularly. Um, especially since it's done such a good job overall of sticking to the general aesthetic. Okay. Twin ion engine, get it? <laughs> Although really in this case it's more like 20 ion engine. So as you can see how quickly I can rotate, this thing is really maneuverable. But, true to form, it really only has the two Gatling guns, which is pretty pathetic. So I can definitely go in and make any kind of fancy dodging if somebody was trying to hit my wings, but it also suffers a little bit from, you know, just being able to maneuver in general. Upwards thrust is again pretty poor, and dual Gatlings doesn't make this very interesting, except for the fact of
Next up, we have the TIE Bomber on the Empire side, and just like I preferred the Y-Wing on the Rebel side, I really do enjoy the TIE Bomber um, on f out of these ships. Um, part of it is because it's got 13 rockets, which you really can't go wrong with, but another part of it too is that this is really one of the more technically accomplished ships here. Let me just go, go ahead and show you what I mean. If I jump into the cockpit here and go to first person mode, I can hold down ALT and look left or right, and you can see that there are actual screens there. I turn the reactors on, and there's actually readouts on there. I can see how much power is being generated on the, um, out of the reactors. I can see things like speed, date, time, and over here we have a damaged blocks readout. I mean, that is just really neat, that while I'm out, I can, you know, at a glance kind of see, okay, this is what, what's been damaged, this is at least how much we're still giving out, and so on and so forth. Now, just like the Y-Wing wasn't very maneuverable, this thing is really slow. I mean, the X-Wing wasn't very doing very well with only two, um, two thrusters on the bottom, and the TIE Bomber, with its significantly higher size, it suffers quite a bit more with that. But, nobody flies this thing because they want to get there quick. They fly because they want to do that. So as you can see from my little button press there, you've got your main view that you can, you know, do from first person, but it makes actually aiming the rockets a little bit difficult. So they've included a camera that is right over in the little pod area that allows you to aim just a little bit better. It's only a little bit to the up and left, as opposed to really being over to the left. And in spite of being in the camera view, you can still control your ship, just as if you were still inside the cockpit. Ouch. I think I just lost out on some of my blocks. No, it didn't give me a readout on it. I guess I just scraped it a little bit. Actually, let's go ahead and see if we can't... We have a turret? Yeah, let's go control the turret. And I'm going to blow a couple of chunks off this thing, and we'll see what that readout gives us. Um, control. Transfer to... Oh, the block wasn't on this way. Okay, so now we have ourselves a missile turret. Let's see what happens if I hit that way. There's one good shot. There's another one. Okay, so that is a nicely damaged TIE bomber. Let's see what the readout gives us. No damaged blocks found. Okay, maybe it's not as impressive as I thought it was. It's a nice idea, though. I mean, we're definitely missing a couple of our missile shots, and of course we've got armor missing. Not that I would expect it to tell us how much armor has been shot off of us, but it would be kind of nice to know how many missiles, uh, missile shots we still have, and so on and so forth. But still, you know, can't go wrong with 13 bombs. that what for blowing holes in my tie bomber deserves every shot it takes. It's pretty impressive that it's holding up to all this. That's a few hundred rockets really. Although now that should leave the front totally undone. Oh well. And I think I may have blown out the two bottom thrusters I had, which kind of shows exactly how fragile the maneuverability on these things are. But still. So. There you have the TIE Bomber.
Last of the combat starfighters on the Empire side, we have the TIE Interceptor, which out of these three kind of left me, well, it left me hanging a little bit, which considering what we had in the TIE Fighter a moment ago is saying quite a bit. I mean, it doesn't hold to the shape of the, um, like for instance, y you've got this very sharp angle here for the TIE Bomber, and it just didn't turn out quite so well on the Interceptor. On top of that, the Gatlings are technically in the wrong spot. Um, the cannon should be right there on the wingtips. Um, although, within the, uh, within the context of Space Engineers, I totally understand why you would do that. Because when I was flying around earlier, these four wingtips get shot off and knocked off really easily. And so, you don't want your only armament to be stuck out there. So, let's go ahead and give this thing a flight. Now, it is really neat that you have the four wings there showing up in your view. This has probably one of the better in-cockpit views of all the rest of them. But, we've only got the Gatling guns. Now, it has the four, one on each wing, and then it looks like it's got two there beneath the... Um, the cockpit as well. And as you can see, Gatlings are really only for making a noise right now. They can barely scratch the paint. Now this does seem to be at least moderately maneuverable. Rotates just about as well as the TIE Fighter did. And seems to turn well enough. But yeah, all in all, Eh, I don't think I'd ever really pick the TIE Interceptor out of these. If I wanted just a bunch of pathetic Gatlings, I would go for the x wing Last of the smaller ships, we have the Lambda-class shuttle. I really love this thing. Um, I mean, the other ones are really cool for flying about in, but especially when you compare the, the, the size of some of these, it really makes you think that Wow, you know, that's that's quite a bit of a hunk of metal that you've got sitting around just a single person. Whereas the shuttle here can actually hold, I think, something like 10 people, which is, which is pretty impressive. Now, there are a couple of problems with it. Um, so we have the, the ramp down here, but you can't actually even walk into it. You have to kind of stick your head down and sort of penguin slide up to be able to get in. Um, but you have all your different passenger seats in here, so yeah, that's... that's eight passenger seats and then the the two cockpits that you're able to get into but to get in and out you kind of got to do this penguin slide and it's it's a little a little awkward let's go ahead and see if we can jump in first before i take off i'd like to whoops what did i do here oh <laughs> i exited from the outside so he's got buttons on here so you can actually interact with the ship without having to wait for the pilot to do anything and that's that's pretty nifty but of course what we're all hoping to see ah maybe it has something to do with rotors oh <laughs> so there we have the wingless lambda class that must actually be it because the fact that this wasn't able to take off but it broke the wings off and the X-Wing wasn't able to take off because of the wings, maybe? That must have been it. Well, that's unfortunate. But let's go ahead and pull out... Let's just copy it out right here. Let's post it up like it had managed to take off without pulling itself apart. And then all you have to do is hit the 2 key, and there you have it. Now, unlike the X-Wings, which is purely an aesthetic thing, this actually does make it quite a bit smaller. Um, there's not really any advantage to flying with the wings out. You know, it'd be kind of interesting if maybe it rotated it out of the way of thrusters that you could then actually activate 
to give you a reason to have it out, but it does fold up into a much smaller space when you've got it down here. Now it does have a little bit of armament. It's got six Gatlin guns, which actually makes this thing just as formidable as a TIE Interceptor. So maybe you'd prefer to fly the Lambda class instead of the Interceptor if you have to choose something. It's maneuverable enough. It doesn't rotate quite as fast. And it took a little bit to slow down, but it's pretty neat. It also has spotlights there on the bottom, which I think are intended to be activated when the actual drawbridge is down. And also, if you've been discovered by those filthy rebels, you can hit the 9 key there, and you can eject off into a little escape pod, leaving that behind. Although really, I don't under know why you would do that. You only seem to have the forward thrusters so you, with a gyroscope, so you have to kind of, I mean, you can't strafe at all. All you can do is move forward and then rotate yourself and try to use those forward thrusters to compensate. But yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a pretty neat little feature, even if it's not actually canon, but hey, you know. So there you have it. There's all the ships that we've gone over. Um, I will go over the Corvette in a bit, but there's all the Starfighters, and I would highly recommend this mod.